Let's see you've got everybody, and we'll say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Some guy here who's a wacko and wants to attack hot springs. And my concern is, do we have a plan if something well, like what happened in Orlando would happen here in hot springs? When we had the fire out here at the Alba Fire, remember how the Red Cross came? I think they're training a bunch of people right now in our community to take over and do some of that stuff. So it's stepped up quite a bit. So um, as far as the city's involvement, I know we let them use the Butler Park and all whatever we had, you know, to do that. And as far as being protected, I don't know, the police department probably gets calls all the time as to some of that. But um, how much we can give out on that, I don't know. But that's all I know. Sims <laughs> are uh, public safety. We, we discussed that on our, at our public safety meeting here just a couple of days ago. And there is a, our police force does have a plan in effect. They know who's supposed to go where and who's supposed to do what. And as far as like something happening to any of the communities around us, we have reciprocal agreements with them that we could call and they will send troops or if they do they need 
help, they can call us and we'll send available policemen to help them. So there is a plan, they do have one. So it's, they take this stuff very seriously. There's no, this is no joke to our police force, even though we're kind of out here in nowhere, South Dakota, it's not funny. So these guys are, we've got dedicated officers and there is, they are, and in fact, the training they just had up at the state home, before they tore that old building down, they pulled all our police force, our state troopers, our highway patrol, they were all up there and they actually had training on how to get into a building, how to neutralize different types of forces up to and including explosives. So our boys are aware and, and well versed on what they can do and what they have to do. Okay. Well, thank you. And, and I know would you have to contact the governor on that, Cindy, if something was to happen here in Hot Springs? I, I actually worked through uh, Frank Maynard at the county for emergency items like that. Okay. Um, but actually, the governor was actually present here in Hot Springs for the SWAT training that um, Tim was referring to. So he's well aware of the training our, our police department has had, which is unusual for a community our size. We were fortunate to have the training here. Yeah. So um, I just I, I pray and hope that we don't have a situation like that happened in Orlando, but we never know. Yeah. So. And how he responds on a case by case basis, depending on what happens. But we have mutual aid agreements with different organizations around the area also that are, you know, signed agreements. Okay. Thank you. Right. And I'm just there dirty today. Happy All right. Hi, <laughs> 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 All right, Andrea, did you want to? Oh, I thought you were getting both. I have here a letter of request. I'm going to give you a copy so you can pass it down. I almost made enough copies for everybody, but I just hate paper. I can't I understand you. Yeah, it's not working. Help. Uh, it's, eat the mic. Eat the mic. I was. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> you missed. So close. Shall we dance? <laughs> so Nolan has a copy of a letter of request for the City of Hot Springs to act as a flow through for the year two funds for our community engagement process. Those will be coming um, from the South Dakota Community Foundation. So basically what we need is for the city to deposit the check as a check as a 501c3 and then disperse the funds to Shedco. We're not a 501c3. You're not? We're just not You're a public a entity, you're a yeah. nonprofit. We're fiscal. We're not you're a fiscal, fiscal agent. agent. And we have done flow through grants uh, most recently for the ambulance service, so it's not unusual, but it's up to the council. I did check with the city attorney. Well, we can discuss it. Okay. This wasn't on the agenda. We can take your request and discuss okay. it. And then uh, Christy Wagner is here with us tonight, and she would like to speak with you as well. How soon do you need to know? Um, uh, yesterday. <laughs> Um, yeah, they. Um, I think they want to go ahead and disperse the funds as soon as possible. So before the next city meeting would be great. Wait, wait, Tom. Yeah. Speaking of Brian, it sounds like the next meeting was fine. Make a decision on the fifth. Brian said that. Yeah. So that okay. Like that, that's well, they actually, your application will be reviewed, and if you get the funding, it'll be dispersed. You'll know at the end of August. Okay. Apparently, we will find out at the end of August. This is all news to me. I'm sorry for the confusion. <laughs> Thanks. That's good. It gives us time to inform the council. Yeah. Better, so that's all right. So basically, what it is, last year we we applied um, for funding through the South Dakota Community Foundation, which is community innovation funds that have been made available from the Bush Foundation. Last year. 
Um, we applied for them and Hot Springs received them. They used, um, because the shed code does not, is not a 501c3, they will disperse funds to either, either a 501c3 or a municipality. So there's two ways that they can do it. And because we didn't have the time last year, the West River Foundation agreed to be the fiscal agent for Hot Springs. And, um, and, and they would prefer not to be, and it would be beneficial to the city, I mean, just to show the partnership between what's going on um, here with the community engagement process, which I believe has been very successful. A number of you have been participants in that and, and know that as well. I just, um, so I'm hopefully you will be vote in the affirmative to be the fiscal agent. And it's basically just a flow through. All of the evaluation is done um, and the grant writing is done through SHEDCO. Is this something we just plan to put on the agenda for the fifth? Yeah. The West River Foundation comment as to why they don't want to be the past two? They just don't, they, they would prefer that it's uh, it's just not a standard practice that they want to do for communities. Um, if if they want to be a partner, if they can help you out, like in the crisis situation last year where we were up to the deadline and it needed the time to come through. Um, so there's time now, so we're just coming to the city and asking for that. Um, Custer recently received the Custer Economic Development Group recently received a grant, and the city did the same thing. Um, Jared and Christy, I know a lot of times I mentioned in our municipal league magazine. Mike, it doesn't work. Sure. <laughs> our Bob, municipal league magazine always lists. I don't know if he does that. or not. How many grants and where they go and where they come from, and those that is one that's mm -hmm. in there always. Yeah, and and it's a it's a it's an operating process that. The, the Bush Foundation has, that it either has to go to a municipality or a 501c3. Being a pass-through agent, we do have the responsibility to make sure that the management of the funds meets the right. criteria of the grant, so it's more how, than just... Right, more than just how it's passing. used is supposed to be something that is furnished back to us so that we do make right. correct decisions. So we'll know well the plan on how it'll be used before we vote? Well, it's the... It's the continuation of the community it's engagement the process. And that's, and that's what, what the grant, it's a pretty simple um, application. And Andrea can supply yeah. a copy of that to, of the grant to you all. Yeah, okay. it's pretty simple. It's just continuing what we're doing, okay. basically. Um, I do want to just share the last time that I was here and, and um, uh, gave you a little bit of an update as to what's going on with um, um, Hot Springs community engagement process. I think it was a couple of days later, Kara, uh, I, we were here and, and I gave Kara the Dakota Resources newsletter, which I believe was distributed to all of you. If you noticed in the center fold of that was really, it was a story about Hot Springs and the work that you all are doing. And that went out to multi-states. Um, I think our mailing, um, it just in the state of South Dakota, is something like 6,000. So there's like 12,000 of them that are dispersed. And so I just want to share with you one thing that's going to be happening. And um, um, on July 19th and 20th, there's going to be a three-state um, economic and community development um, summit that's taking place in Aberdeen. It's called the Rural X Summit. And um, some of you have some information right there, Carl's got it right there. And I will be, along with one of my other coaching colleagues on the eastern side of the state, we'll be doing two 45 minute sessions on the opening day um, about community engagement. And I'm wanting to hold up hot springs um, in my part of that, and I have at, been visiting with Kim Barberi, and I spoke with Nolan today, and I think Cindy's aware of it as well. Um, Kim had, and I, I have um, Andrea and Kim 
and Greg Faust with the Housing Authority, those three who will be with me in that presentation, I'm hoping, um, I think that's the plan anyway, to hold up Hot Springs. One of the things that's really needing to note is the major, one of the major sponsors is the Bush Foundation. That's why it's a North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota act, event. Um, they will be in attendance and they will know, they will hear from your people. And that is very critical um, um, for future funding for different things. Um, and we just talked about that in our recreation committee meeting. So thank you for your time and I appreciate the time that I wasn't on your agenda. Thank you. Any questions? We do appreciate the article. I've, I've used it, I've copied it. I've probably violated copyright laws. And if you want more copies, <laughs> it, it we can get you more copies. I can get more copies yeah. sent to the city office if you'd like some nice copies. We just, I really appreciate it. But if you go on Dakota Resources, plural, dot org, you can click on the Rolex Summit tab and it's got the agenda. And you can still, if any of you want to participate, you can register, you can come. Um, um, they are limiting the, um, it's going to be a really neat event. Um, there's over half of the registrations are already filled and um, sponsorships continue to come in. And, um, it, it, it's it's going to be a good thing, and it's going to be great that Hot Springs is going to be held up. So it's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, were there any other communications from the public? All right, I'm going to move on to personnel, um, items A through D. Any discussion? All in favor of all personnel? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Committee reports, uh, admin and finance, Georgia. We had a meeting June 13th at 1, and we uh, reviewed um, the elected officials' practice of consulting attorneys. And we have some stuff on here and instruction and training waivers for the uh, Southern Hills Golf Course and Evans Plunge so that we can have people go and train and we are not responsible for their training and uh, everybody got that in their packet for tonight and then also uh, we talked about mining area but the hills and materials a little bit and the re reimbursement issues and do you want to go ahead with the airport? Sure, you guys were busy there. Yeah. <laughs> This was a special meeting call because we had people interested in building hangars out at the airport and this was done uh, last uh, Tuesday morning, June 15th. And uh, they were interested in finding the specifics um, that people should be using before they build so they're not just putting up shacks. <laughs> and so they came up with quite a few different um, uniform standard building uh, guidelines and uh, it'll be available online and, and with the master plan which is um, at the South Dakota or hot springs sd.org city department for the airport um, they did talk I really like the guidelines yeah by the way I'm really glad you we had 14 that people can work with we had 14 people interested so we better do something here and get it on the road <laughs> Um, then they also talked a little bit about uh, rodent problems. You can't have golf, um, a very good air uh, field with gophers and stuff running around, so prairie dogs will be dealt with. Um, and um, I think that was all pretty much, it was a good meeting. Yes, thank you. And so you don't have one on Friday? No, Friday meeting is canceled because of that special one because we have people interested in finding those guidelines out. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Andrea is not here. I don't think there's an update there anyway. Uh, Carol Ann, you, did you skip there? Oh, well, it's next. I know it's Wednesday. Yeah, it is this Wednesday at noon. I do have some updates. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so this Wednesday at noon is our meeting 
Uh, the annual Main Street Arts and Crafts Festival is at Centennial Park on the 24th through the 26th. On June 25th, we have the Relay Concert at 7 p.m. here at the Mueller Center. The 28th, we have Screen on the Green, the Star Wars movie, The Force Awakens, at dusk, noon -ish, or nine-ish, at the Public Library, and also the Fall River Fourth of July celebration, July 2nd through 4th. Um, is happening. We've got the Firecracker 10K, 5K, Firecracker Mile. Um, we've got the parade at 10 a.m. on the 4th, Chamber Picnic. We have the duck race at 1. We do not have the um, car derby this year. Right, so no demolition derby. No demolition derby. So. Thank you. Yes, you had a lot of good information. <laughs> a lot of events. <laughs> All right, Carolyn. Um, we'll meet July the 6th at 5 at the library. Thank you. All right, back to you, Kara, for the Evans Pond. Okay, let me get my notes up here real quick. Um, the next meeting is in July. We're going every other month now. So it's uh, 7 p.m., the third Thursday. The whale slide is operational. We had some difficulty with that, but we have it up and running now. Um, we have four additional lifeguard trained and certified. Uh, we have one guard recertified. <clears throat> the outdoor pool, of course, is now open. It was open Memorial Weekend. We had <clears throat> the At Your Leisure TV travel show, came to film groups, and um, they they did a little show for the and filming of the Evans Plunge. That was kind of exciting, and. We are researching pool vacuums for our algae problem in the outdoor pool. Uh, they've been adding more chlorine in the outdoor pool to kind of try to take care of this problem. They've been out there scrubbing with wire brushes to, to try to keep the size of the pool clean. It's kind of, you know, get a lot of sunlight out there and that algae just loves to grow that mineral water. Tom is working on the failing locker uh, mechanisms to keep that income stream coming in. So we're repairing the key locks or the, the money locks. <clears throat> and um, all three tills now are equipped with credit card machines so we can get people through faster and take their money faster. <laughs> um, <laughs> Bowden is now a certified pool operator, a CPO. Yeah. So that's good news. And we had a $5,000 day last week. Yeah, thank you, Karen. Appreciate it. Uh, nothing from PNC tonight because Kim's not here. Uh, public safety, Tim, I believe you had a meeting. I'm kind of got an impromptu. What did I skip you? Yep. <laughs> Let's go back to parks. Okay. <laughs> yep, I'm seeing every other line tonight for some reason. Sorry. Um, is this working? No. <laughs> no. I'll just accept that I didn't see yeah, it. Yeah, it is. It, it, it. Is yeah. it working? No. Okay. Uh, tall grass committee continues to move forward with the tall grass park uh, plan of uh, clear needs being met, uh, the ADA compliance to our parks. Um, so far we have added two ADA swings, one at uh, Butler and one at Chautauqua. Uh, we are also replacing all the sand and peat gravel uh, with ADA compliant wood chips. This, uh, it has arrived, but we'll shortly be actually doing it. The ADA uh, bathrooms at Brookside should begin this August. Also um, discussing with Nolan um, about the signage that it meets with DOT standards um, and keeping close contact uh, to make sure that that happens. And then uh, just and we also uh, talked about the weather concern about um, then we're supposed to not be getting any rain and the temperature is supposed to get up to around 100 degrees so that's something we want to keep an uh, eye on for our parks and our next meeting is planned for 7-5 right after 4th of July it will be on a Tuesday instead of a Monday because 4th of July falls on Monday 3 o'clock City Hall um, it's open to the public, so I hope everybody can attend, or you know, people that are interested. Not everybody, I don't think we're fit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you'll cram them in there. We'll, we'll get them in. 
as far as the cultural goes, the, the South Dakota pageant, I wasn't here this weekend. I was um, uh, out, of, out of state, but um, people I talked to said that it was well attended. And uh, Julie Olson is our new South Dakota from, South Dakota, from Sioux Falls. Again, I'll I know that Kara already mentioned it, but the 40th annual event at um, Centennial Park Arts and Crafts Festival, June 24th, 25th, and 26th, 7 o'clock p.m. Brulee Concert here at the Mueller Center, June 25th. That's all I got. I, I, can I add something to that? Uh, I, I was here all three nights. It was oh, a busy good. place. And I thought we should give Bob and Chris both a compliment, hand, a shake. <laughs> it was a lot of work. We were here. Very good point. Thank so, you. So thank you, Georgia, for mentioning that. Yeah. Yes, thank you guys very much. So do we have a plan for fireworks on the board if it's... Yeah, we'll follow. Very the, hot and very dry. There's a band of fact we'll adhere to that. Not the plant, uh, okay, so we need to kind of let people know that. Perhaps there's again Facebook, next all the stars, all the points of the outlets there. So, okay. No, I didn't say that. So we're watching it. I caught devil about the fireworks oh, already no. two months ago, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, Krista, I don't know how I missed the top line there, but uh, public safety now, Tim. We kind of had an impromptu meeting. We really didn't have an agenda, but Mike showed up, so we talked about some of the stuff going on with the police force. They're working on some grants, We're talking about getting some new radios. They've redone their citation booklet so that the way it's set up now, I understand you've got to write out a separate page for every offense and they're setting them up now so that they can charge you with more than one offense on one ticket. How's that sound? <laughs> <laughs> and they kind of went over how they were handling the stuff down here at the pageant with how they're swapping their officers back and forth so there was somebody available all the time. Their new training, we also discussed vehicles of which I was informed today that we lost a police vehicle. We didn't lose it. It is no longer mechanically operable. Mm. So we're short a police vehicle what now. To it? Yeah. Transmission. The transmission is gone and a few other things. It, it's one that we've been babying along and just, it's kind of nickel and diming us down to where it's getting to where we've got to, going to have to do something. That's, that was the safety meeting. Public, Public works. works. Believe it or not, we did get into some of the final work on the Albany Avenue. We went through and kind of compared notes between our, our engineer and our contractor. And it looks like they're, they're coming up pretty close. They were going to do a final inspection the next day and they'll be getting back to us, at which time we'll sit down and, and crunch numbers. And, and there's, the contractors made a request to maybe do some, some change and we'll have to, that will be brought before the council. So I won't make that decision on my own at a public works meeting. I think it's something that everybody needs to be yeah. involved in. Yeah, it's gonna be discussed. It'll be, discussed. right. Uh, loading docks, they fought, poured the pads, getting the drains are installed, so it shouldn't be too awful long. Uh, Boulder Falls, there, we discussed Tracy's going to go ahead and do whatever he can on his own, and then hopefully we'll be able to grab a couple of people from the other one of the other departments to go out and help him do the finish up. I guess I stressed to him that we need this done. When this thing all comes together, we don't want to be sitting here waiting because we can't find a nail in the middle of the road. So I think he's going to put this to where he's going to get it finished quickly. Also, we talked, we talked about the outfit that we're buying, the sludge dewatering 
equipment from is having a, they have a unit installed in Elk Falls, Minnesota. And right now they've, they're offering to host Cole Richards and Tracy Bastion for a site visit. However, this will depend on, you know, we'll have to check the travel expenses and all that sort of stuff because it's, it's a, a manufacturer's inviting us to one of their dog and pony shows and I don't believe we should pay for it. We are not. <laughs> they are. They have that with me, so. They're hosting. So they are, they are, they're paying all expenses. So. We discuss bridges and we discuss the wood chips, getting our, our brush piles chopped up. I guess Nolan's still entertaining bids or whatever on Chase that. But I, what we could do is if we started one end of it, on the wind was the right direction, we'd have people from downwind come up and help us chip the other end so we didn't burn it. <laughs> <laughs> now you're just looking for trouble. <laughs> that's all that we have. Right. <laughs> it's always somebody. Yeah. All right, thanks, Tim. Appreciate that. Both of those, actually. Um, Georgia, any update on the golf course? Well, we um, have a meeting coming on Friday, and it was originally planned for 10, and we've moved it to 4 p.m. so that we could have more of the committee members attend. Did you guys tell Martin, that guy who's calling in? Did you guys tell me that you changed it? We didn't because tell he's you. calling into my phone. We did tell you. So you're changing <laughs> it to 4? Yes. Just now? No, we did this morning. I guess no one and I did. <laughs> I was like, why are you attending this one? We've He's got, got my a gentleman two. calling into my phone. Right, He's got my number two. We're all aware of who Larry is. Yeah. It was, it I'm not morning. available. Just I'll, I'll just say that I'm not available for Okay. Me. I was not aware you're playing for the time, to be honest. The gentleman who wanted to use my phone to conference into I the I had no idea he was calling your phone. I thought he was calling. I thought. Well, he is now. <laughs> okay. We'll hit the door for you. Yeah. Well, I guess I, uh, whatever. So, um, so anyway, then also we'll be discussing a little bit on the 2017 budget. Some of the concerns were just um, the use of the golf course and its closure. And the Girls State Golf Tournament was really a, a big success. We had many, many people up there. Parking was probably a bigger issue than anything, but we worked together and I think everybody was satisfied with getting around. It was a big, big event, and the Father's Day golf tournament was yesterday, and that was went off really well. I think they've changed it to member guest instead of Father's Day. It's the Father's Day Invitational. Yeah. I think it's how it's worded. Uh -huh. But there's different pairings. It could be a member guest. It could be his family. Right. It doesn't uh, have to just to be father. Right. Yep. Yeah. It's a variety of different nominations. That's all. Thank you. Andrea's not here tonight. I don't believe there's an update for this meeting. All right, so we'll move to old business. Item A, discussion of possible motion to approve updated mining contract with Hills Material on city land adjacent to Hills Material Quarry. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? I, Tim and I went out and looked at it today and we evaluated a lot of it let's put it and I have pictures if anybody would like to see it um, the land is basically non-usable because of the access um, from anyone in the public so um, for us to use it for anything else is basically useless so. okay so I'll take a vote all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed motion carried thank you New business. Uh, we had a recount on the Ward 2 election, so we need to re-canvas Ward 2 election results after the recount. Um, several of you saw this prior to the meeting. Um, and we will need a new and a separate resolution that's in your packet. And that'll come later. Do we need to accept the recount here or at the resolution? 
I don't think it would hurt to do it in both places. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item B, discussion of possible motion to approve temporary alcohol license for Woolies Western Grill for the July 9th Wind Cave Centennial Banquet at Mueller Civic Center. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item C, discussion of possible motion to approve training and trainer instructor waivers for Southern Hills Golf Course and Evans Plunge Mineral Springs. Make motion to accept it. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item D, discussion of possible motion to approve travel request for City Administrator Shorter to attend Outlook for West River Economy Luncheon. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Resolution 26, I'm sorry, 2016-9. Resolution declaring results of election recount in Ward 2. Motion to approve. You want to second that? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And by the way, the recount was exactly the same as the first minute. So the equipment works, which is good news. Misty, do you have a report for us tonight? I do. I have a few things to talk about. Um, uh, just a reminder to anyone interested in the budget training on July 6th, I have to know by the end of the night tonight if you can make it. I do have people interested. I just want to give you one more reminder before that closes up. And then July 20th, the elected officials workshop and peer. Um, same thing, I have to have the check issued by the next council meeting, so please let me know as soon as possible um, if you can attend that. I also wanted to give the council just a brief update of what we went over while I was in finance officer school. Um, you allowed me the opportunity to go, and I just wanted to let you know how much information they pack into those few days. Um, the very first day, I was part of a banding users group. That's the software that we use. I got to meet with the owner of the company and other municipalities that use the software, which is really good to know in the event that you need some suggestions. So. Uh, there was a legislative update given by Yvonne Taylor from the Municipal League. Um, Rod Fortin talked about um, basic investing for cities. He also talked about basic accounting, so I got to go to two of his sessions. We had a fabulous keynote speaker, Steve Gilliland. He's a comedian and a speaker. Uh, he spoke two times on the second day. He got us started in the morning, which was very enjoyable, and then after we came back for lunch, he kept us up again. Um, our breakout sessions, we talked, well, the ones I attended, de-escalating verbal conflict, which you'd be surprised how often you can use those skills in this job. Um, a doc, Dr. Pat Simpson, who's the Dean of uh, yeah, College of Education and Behavioral Sciences at Blackville State University, put that on, which is very interesting. Um, I talked, we, I went to a breakout session preparing for an audit. Even though I've done a few, I learned some things in that session. Rod Fortin also put that one on. Um, there was a utility billing panel where we got to talk with other communities about some of the utility billing issues that they have and the tips and tricks that are working for other people. You'd be surprised how much time our office spends on all of our utility billings and it was good to hear that we're not alone and there's a lot of communities that do a lot of the same things. Um, I got to attend a session called The World of Liquor, which is not near as fun as it sounds, but I did uh, get to learn a lot of information about licensing and uh, requirements and um, got to talk to some other municipalities that have similar uh, issues as we do. And then one of the best speakers we got to hear uh, was on project management. That was the third day, um, Rachel Headley. Spoke. She uh, has developed satellites, and she looked about 35, but she has done, um, she's built four different businesses, and now 
is rebuilding a house in the Spearfish area that her talks around project management, how you can get people together working towards the same goal was very, very helpful. And again, you'd be surprised how often we utilize these skills in this job. Um, and then I got a property tax breakout session that was very interesting. Um, the Department of Revenue came and talked about property taxes and assessments have been um, a hot topic in our area and all across the state because of reevaluations and um, counties and cities getting getting their records more up to date. And so that was a very interesting session. So thank you for allowing me the opportunity to go to that. Wanted to let you know a little bit what my three days out of the office were like. We really appreciate you taking the time to get trained. Um, I also wanted to thank, again, all of the election workers. We had to have a recount, and one of the things that recount showed us is how hard they work and how well they follow direction. I was asked by somebody at the recount what the election workers make because they actually work a 13-hour day with no breaks. You're not allowed to leave once the polls open. You have to be there to prepare before they open, and they're open for 12 hours. They get $115 for that day. Um, it was interesting to see the recount process. I was happy to be able to be a part of that. Um, the recount in Ward 2, though, showed me how well they do. And, at election school, I hear from other municipalities how difficult it is to find workers, and that's not the case in our county. We have a very good, strong, committed, dedicated group of people that are always willing to step up, and they know how long the days are, and they do a very good job. So I wanted to thank them. I also wanted to thank all the people who ran. I congratulate those who won. I'm thankful to have races in wards where more than one great qualified person is interested in representing their community. It's not an easy job. Thank you for those of you who have been here. Carl, I'll miss you. I know you're not going too far though, so hopefully we'll still see you around. Um, and then just a reminder, the official Canvas sheet before the meeting is over, if you could all come by and sign that for me for the recount we did. And for the community, we're closed on Monday the 4th, and we'll be open on the 5th, and that's also our next council meeting. Thank you. I'll uh, echo Misty's sentiments there. Carl, thank you so much for the service you provided our community and the council. I know you've served on for multiple terms and you've definitely done your uh, more than your fair share of work to get Hot Springs where it is today. So thank you for your service. Thank you. Uh, with that, I'm also excited for the, the next council to come on board. I've already talked to both Bob and Skyler a little bit, probably more than they care to at this point. But I think what they're learning and what you guys already know is to be a council member it requires a lot of time, attention to detail, and also a sincere uh, concern for our community and its future. So for those who ran, uh, whether you're elected or not, thank you so much for jumping into that, uh, that commitment. With that, for my report, I did meet with Ray Burbike last week to go over wayfinding signage. Krista alluded to this a little bit in her report. Basically with the 2020-2021 reconstruction project, we have a great chance to help those not familiar with our community to orient themselves, to know where our parks are at, hospital, attractions, things of that nature. So we are looking at possibly consulting with a sign design firm. We'll have more information about this though at our parks and beautification meeting. Also admin finance, again with the project, still four or five years out, the planning for it has already begun and it's better to have this figured out now rather than later for the DOT's design and planning uh, purposes. July 2nd and July 4th, we have parades downtown. We will put out mixed solar alerts. We will do Facebook uh, notices. Also, the Star may also publicize the calendar of events. We do have the 4th of July celebration, which we do each year, but this year is especially busy and special with the 125th anniversary of our fire department. So on Saturday, July 2nd, there'll be a parade, and then on Monday, July 4th, there'll also be another parade and plenty of activities all weekend long for that. Tim, we already mentioned about the, the wood chips. Basically, we're trying to get at least three estimates based on our procurement policy. We historically have burned our wood chip, our wood pile out of the maintenance shop, but with the development out there and also drier conditions over the winter, we feel that wood chipping would might be the better of the two options. That said, there is a cost to it, and that cost looks like it could range between fifteen and twenty-five thousand dollars for the current pile we have. Again, though, with the dry conditions, not just during the winter, but now also this summer, having a large pile like that is a liability. It 
committees to address and take seriously. My last update is the maintenance department has begun work on the Freedom Trail this week. If you haven't been down there today, if you plan to be down there later this week, you'll notice that we are taking out at least two to three panels of concrete where a tree root system has uplifted or shifted the panels. So look for some construction taking place down there. Basically, it's a take out, replace, and repair job. This is being funded in part by the grant we received last year, but also out of the City of Hot Springs, professional services, parks budget, and expenses there. Also, any other miscellaneous expenses will be categorized appropriately. And then with that too, we are also doing edging along the Freedom Trail. So we're, for the first time, cutting back the grass that's overgrowing the trail. We're doing bank stabilization, adding riprap, and then other um, items kind of as needed along the trail to help further enhance that. You guys have more information on your sheets, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. That is all. Thank you, Nolan. Could I add, you can correct me, but we chipped that wood pile before the last time we didn't burn it. And if I remember right, the cost at that time was right at 25000 is what it cost us, and the pile was if I think, if I remember right, it was actually kind of smaller than what we've got now. The, so yeah. just so that the people understand that we've done this before, and actually the numbers that Nolan's been able to gather in for us is actually a little better than, it's better than what we did the first time, so. Yeah, the information I have from our previous efforts of chipping and burning is I think in, whenever uh, the winter storm atlas hit hot springs, that's when we had to do uh, contractor come in to chip it that was paid mostly through FEMA funding. Uh, this, however, is more so the brush that we've cut ourselves or the, the public drops off at that location. We looked at two different options, whether we well, asked three options, including the burn factor, but do we buy the equipment ourselves, maintain it and operate it, or do we contract out? And you look at the cost to own and maintain versus a contractor, and then you factor in the you know labor, labor cost to ourselves to have our own staff do it. It makes more sense to contract than it does to own especially based on maintaining the equipment. It's very complex and some self-defeating equipment. When you chip it, you know, it defeats the machine itself. So yeah, we've done it in the past, but now we're at the point where it's large enough, we have to reconsider how we want to mitigate it in the future. Tim, you mentioned to contact the State Veterans Home. I know they had got the biofuel, the wood burning system they have there. So I contacted them and they're going through their chain of command to get an answer. If we can repurpose those chips, for that use, and then if that's the case, we can do a cost share with the, the state veterans home. So we'll know more about that later this week or early next week. It's one thing no one's very good at is finding a good deal for the city. Appreciate that. All right, um, I'm going to remind you all that we are down a police vehicle, mostly the council here, because they've been denied a police vehicle for a couple years, and. Um, you know, they're really in dire straits now, and just, you know, going back to what Mr. Purnell brought up earlier, you know, part of our emergency management is that our law enforcement have vehicles. <laughs> so we do need to address that pretty quickly. Also want to remind you that I gave you a handout from Prairie Hills Transit. They wanted to make sure that everyone knew that they can assist with getting children to and from summer rec or any other um, activities so we didn't want parents who work to feel like they couldn't have their children involved in summer rec. We do have uh, public transportation options and it's really reasonable. So uh, maybe I'll get you that information John. I handed that out. Um, also thanks Ryan I think that's you in the back for uh, donating your time tonight. Appreciate that. That's Zach. Is it Zach? He's getting paid. Yeah, oh, never mind. I think I have a guy. Look busy. <laughs> Did I see Ryan earlier? Or no? Oh, okay. Thank, thank you, too, Zach. Just kidding. Appreciate you. Also, want to remind everybody that it's fire season. Somebody probably tossed a cigarette out today and started a fire along the highway. Um, and I'm speculating on that, but the bottom line is it's, it is a very dry season this year. Be very cautious of any types of fire. Um, and I want to end with thanking Carl as well. Um, Ten years of service to the city. That's very significant and this is not an easy job.
believe it or not, he's only 25 years old. Does he have 10 years old, do you? <laughs> but uh, I do appreciate all you've done. Thank you. And I'll let you, let for the last time, I'll say I'm done. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Can't leave till you sign that, though. Please.